Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On the Mic with the M. And T. Hey, today I'm just going to, we're just going to start talking. I saw something in the paper recently, and I think I saw it on IG too, where a young lady was talking about how things have changed for families. Mm -hmm. She said 50 years ago, 78% of the families were headed by men. Okay. And now, speed ahead 50 years later. 78% 78% of the homes are now headed by women. Oh. Yes. Oh, that's big. Yes. Oh, that's big. So almost 80% of today's households are being led by women. By women. Wow. And, you know, she mentioned, you know, the welfare state and, and how the government and all that stuff. Has, government assistance has yes. basically perpetuated this outcome. Exactly. Okay. Um, Meaning food stamps, temporary cash assistance, stuff like that. All that. Okay. So the woman is able to then accept these government services inside the household and now she's able to sustain the home on her own. Exactly. Bullshit. But go ahead. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm just saying because that's, uh, is that enough? And whose household is that enough? It and if we don't talk about today's household, is that, we... is that enough <laughs> in today? But I can understand how you want to say the trajectory. That's pretty much where we started at. I'll, I'll accept that. And, and so, of course, you know, when she said that, it's, I, I can't argue with that because I know when I was going to school, more of the kids I went to school with had both parents in the house Okay. than now. Mm-hmm. Because I know talking to my son, when he was going to school, he was like, you know, that wasn't many together parents, more divorced parents, more um, mixed families or uh, what's the term to use now? Blended family. Thank you, producer. Yeah, so I think for my son's upbringing, I think I seen what I thought was a nuclear family, mm-hmm. but it was a blended family. Mm-hmm. They just look real good. Yes. They have a problem with that. No. Um, but they weren't led by women. Hmm. The males were present or are present for when my upbringing. Hmm. I just know what my household was. And it was led by a man. <laughs> yes. But I do recall, I don't think there were many fathers in the households of my peers when I was coming up. Wow. I I, I had one friend who had a father in her household. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Producer, how many people you knew friend-wise who had intact families? Uh, in terms of intact families, I want to say in high school... I had a class of probably about 50, 60 people, and I can't, I could probably only say eight. Wow. Had both parents. Wow. Uh, Most of them had divorced parents or parents who were together and didn't live in the same house at all, didn't deal with each other. You went to dad's house Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And you were at mom's house Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Wow. And on Sunday, you got to pick. Wow. What type of lifestyle is that for the children? I'm just curious. Like, I, I, it's just a little I, off, but what type of lifestyle is that really for the kids? It, it, it's it's not the, really. Yeah, what did the kids <clears throat> like? A lot of them complained about it. A lot of them were upset about it. And these are Caucasians, you know what I mean? Like, wow. The black people were. F- Four of them, myself included, would be five who had families out of nine in total. Wow. <laughs> five out of nine in total, five of which were black. Mm-hmm. Wow. And these black people had money. That's why wow. they were together. Wow. You know what I mean? Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of the parents were not together in some way, shape, or form. So we're seeing that this is a across the board whether you're black white chinese whatever that this is a prevalent thing well the male enrollment also in the in the colleges and universities is also down yes same time down. right exactly. is is that a coincidence no and think about kids or uh, boys in school yep i mean a lot of it's crazy a lot of guys graduated from school and can't read or write but why not well, at what age do you real life learn to read or write? What grade? God damn, I, I knew how to read and write before I even got into kindergarten. See? 
the, there are certain <laughs> things that you do need to know to, b- before you enter into grade school because you build upon things. Mm-hmm. And when our young boys walk inside a school building and they everything is built on top of you learning the past information mm-hmm. and you didn't learn this information, mm-hmm. you're slowly but surely left behind. Wow. Statistics, if your child is not reading on grade level by first grade, the chances of them recovering is almost <laughs> zero to none. God damn. Like first grade. Good so Lord. you think about the emphasis that the school systems put on reading and that grade. Technically, we shouldn't be doing anything but reading, honing re- our reading skills. Exactly. And you're, you're trying to figure out why this is a problem. If your kid struggled in third grade, they probably struggled in first grade, which Absolutely. means that they struggled in third grade, they're going to struggle in sixth grade. Absolutely. Now, you tell me you had a student who struggled in sixth grade who didn't also struggle in ninth grade? Come on now. The students normally, how they enter in kindergarten and the levels that they add in kindergarten, mm-hmm. and they shift and they move, and they make the most movements in kindergarten. And it kind of shows you where you operate in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For the most part, the person who operated at the top of that classroom performed at the top of that classroom in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably performed at the top of the classroom in first grade. Yes. And then that probably took them all the way to 12th grade. Yeah. Operating at the highest part of the day. So think about the person who's operating all the way at the bottom part. Oh, my God. What about that bottom 10% or 20% of children who are struggling to read? Wow. What that happens to them? So by the time you struggle to read and struggle to uh, be assessed on those standardized tests, right? Mm-hmm. By the time you get to ninth grade and you struggle with the assessments for ninth grade benchmarks and all those good things, then they were, you were under grade level for all that stuff. Mm-hmm. What happens by the time it's time for you to sit and take the ASVAB or the MCAT and go into the military oh. or into um, college or university or just enter into that next step of adulting? Exactly. Are you properly prepared and can you even compete properly? Wow. No. Because... How do you internalize life? And, and as much fucking money as we spend on education, we hear it all the time. When Marilyn passed this new thing to the have casinos, casinos and, right? That's going to help with the education. Mm-mm. When they passed that bullshit lottery back 50 years ago, mm-hmm. that's supposed to do a lot with education. But the fucking kids are dumber now than, than Absolutely. 50 years ago? Absolutely. Then what the hell are we doing? What, what the hell? What's the purpose of school if the boys are failing that early? It's like we don't even have, so we know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Everybody's known, and we've been knowing it. What year did the um, woman quote that statistic? Um, It was this year. So she went back 50 years. So that puts it at 1973. Okay. Yeah, okay. 73. Yeah, so, but I think mine's, my stat reflected 1988. That we knew how disadvantaged the children's were the children were when when we referenced um, reading and competing inside the school system. Wow! So we've been we always known these things. What programs have real life been put in place in your community to take the boys, specifically the boys, because they are our leaders, right? What programs? <laughs> There's no programs no. that emphasize growing the boy or the male into the male that he needs to be. That is very true, but it it goes back to the original system of education. Mm-hmm. It's never changed. It's the mm-hmm. same fucking education yep. you had in the turn of the century, the last yep. century, where basically just training people to work. Because yeah. people don't really understand that, oh, where does the educa- educational system mm-hmm. came from? It mm-hmm. came from the guys like uh, Henry Ford and mm-hmm. those kind of guys who basically wanted people to be good workers. Yes. Good, on time. obedient, on-time yes. workers. receiving information. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So they kept that all along. So they never really think about you being a business owner, being an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. thinking outside the box. They want you to show up every day, do your do your 40 hours and go home. And that's what they, they did back in the day. Right. But shit has changed since 1900. We're mm-hmm. now in 2023 and we're still using that same old shit and not really looking at the ways of really teaching boys. Boys learn differently than girls. I don't Absolutely. know why the fuck they keep thinking that, oh, no, Absolutely. everybody's the same. Everybody learns differently. 
Because, and, and again, that's why women, girls do so good in college and it's, high school and all that shit. When boys struggle a lot because you're like, you're forcing them. You better learn this way. And if you don't learn this way, fuck you. you mm-hmm, you'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. It's even more so that, like, it's not dynamic. Um, I know, like, for me, a lot of the, the classes in which I remember and retained a lot of the information were classes that allowed us to engage with the material realistically. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. You're teaching us how to do algebra. That That's fine. But when we took algebra and instead of saying uh, y equals or y plus, what was it? Y plus mx equals b or some shit like that. I can't remember what the, or mx plus b equals y or something like that. I can't remember what the, the formula was off the top of my head now. Um, that's cool, but that doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. But if you sat there and said, okay, you got a, a payment due on a car loan and it is X amount per month and you need to figure out how many months you're going to have to pay and how much income you would need to, to make in order to sustain that and still only spend 25% of your, or 20% of your income on car payments, that was easier to figure out because I'm taking real life examples and able to kind of point it in a direction that made some damn sense. A lot of the teaching that we do is scheduled around just the abstract. And I think we've had this conversation on the podcast a couple of times. Men are concrete. Mm-hmm. Like give a guy A plus B plus C and they can give give you D. Like without ease. <laughs> nah, give you D. Sorry, I'm, I'm immature. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> it just, it just, it just popped me. It just popped me. I'm sorry. Um, but it's true. Like it's very easy, concrete. If you give them exactly what you need, that's what I tell a guy can give it to mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. without much of an issue. Make it relatable and real. Make it relatable and make it real. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, it's abstract is, is how we are taught. Mm-hmm. And so, unless you find a way to make abstract concrete, you just don't give a shit. Yeah, and so you, it, it kind of goes in one ear out the other. Mm-hmm. But like these same guys, if you give them a playbook, mm-hmm. they can understand and break down a defense in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. They can look at a basketball game and tell you, okay, that guy's going to do a back cut, and like you can see these guys are intelligent. Mm-hmm. In a lot of cases, in so many cases, if you put that guy in an environment of something that they're interested in, you see the intelligence is there. Mm-hmm. They just have no reason to apply it to the thing that they're tackling. I had a guy in my class uh, growing up who I always thought, man, like, why are you just, you, know, you just don't give a shit about nothing. Mm-hmm. As we got older, it started to become very apparent. He was just bored. Mm-hmm. He was a smart guy who was bored. Mm-hmm. So he just didn't give a shit. So he just went through the day making noise and, and just doing stupid shit. But he'd be the first one where if we had an exam on something that was like he was interested in, a a student. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Yep. Wow. I sometimes also think that the blended male female thing creates that false competition in the class, right? Mm-hmm. To where you have this majority of students um, in the classroom, or what you half the students, because half of them are probably female, mm-hmm. um, can follow the direction. Mm-hmm. And so now the other half who can't, they're kind of like bad or not on task type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like they're outside of the norm. Yes. Right. Yes. And so you automatically create this, this, this path for the male to walk. That is not naturally something that he should be walking. And you can see that by how the classroom reacts and responds. And then we lynch yep. ourselves onto the ladies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you must. You have yep. to. You must. There's so many instances <laughs> where we were like, oh man, as guys, like we know, like we really want to work together, mm-hmm. but we know inherently if we're talking about getting a good grade, it can't happen mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what we do is we split and try to linchpin ourselves into some lady who's going to be honest. willing to, to be the anchor for the group. Like you're going to be the one, unfortunately, and I can say it because a lot of my people know, like, we would lynch ourselves on somebody and be like, look, you're going to anchor the group. You're going to be the one to tell us, like, we, when we need to get something turned in, just let us know. And that gives women the responsibility to have to lead the guys because we know that, like, this ain't for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's you. You got that. Mm-hmm. And we yes. just, just tell us what you need us to do. 
and we would do whatever was required that she asked us to do. That's true. I chose the young lady for my son. Really? Yeah, I did. Sick real close to home. Wow. Because I could see the situation. He's bored. He don't even, like you said, sometimes when you're too good, you don't even care to like be all the way present. And yeah. for whatever reason, that he did K through eight in the same building. Every single year back to school night, it's always the same little girl in his class. And she was an excellent student. And she, you know, they were friends. Wow. I said, no, you you stick right close to her and make sure she looks out for you and you look out for her. Wow. Because in my opinion, the guys who made it out and who were successful real life did attach themselves to a lady or two who they know they was going to be able to share notes from. I don't want to say copy homework off of, but, you know, <laughs> you know, I know you ain't did your homework last night and you're going to get this Ow. giant zero and it's going, you know, drop your grade from a C off the jump. And then by the end of the quarter, you're going to be at an E. Yeah. If you don't write down these answers real quick type of thing. Um, but you, you, you needed somebody to kind of make sure that as a male, you were kind of operating in the capacity that you were supposed to be here here because this is not your arena and, and the girls can even tell like why yep. are the boys acting like that it's like all of the boys <laughs> all of them that, yes. they all have a problem yeah. well, what's the chances that all the boys in the, in the in the school in the classroom have the same exact problem and that is true because I know it, it, and it's bad because <laughs> when I was in school we call them romper room classes for the people who weren't as uh how can i say this nicely they weren't the average student they needed some assistance mm-hmm. and it was bad because when i got to high school they kept them on different floors there's some people that went to high school with me i never saw them above on the second level mm-hmm. because they were always on the lower level right next to like the principal's office mm-hmm. it's almost like they were like if they act up they can just go to the next room they real close to the principal's office <laughs> Like get your get your group Were they ass behavioral over there. issues it was and both. learning issues? It was both. Yeah, and they would put them on that one level. So you know, I'll be downstairs talking to them. All of a sudden, you hear the little bell, and you you know, you got to go to your class. You got three minute warning. So then you're sitting there talking to them, and then you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna go grab my stuff," and then you start running up the step. Mm-hmm. But you look at the ones you talk to; they were always down at that level. Mm-hmm. I never forget one time somebody said, "Man, what y'all do up there? Go, man, we go class. What the fuck you talking about? What we do up there?" <laughs> Man, I never been up there. And the only time they go up there is when they go up to the library because uh-huh. the library is on the second floor. Uh-huh. But they ain't reading no goddamn book. They're yeah. just sitting at the desk, you know, shooting the breeze, chewing gum, fucking around. And we're coming out of class. I'm like, God damn, you out here already? Yeah, we do this out early. Then one time I asked, what did y'all do? Oh, let me show you. But they used to keep them in a the room. They used to have a curtain. So you really couldn't look in the room. But they go in there and it's like one plus one is two. Two plus two is four. High school. Wait a minute. High school. Yeah, they've been getting special help from the schools ever since they failed their um their 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 benchmark assessment in um first grade. So we're now talking about eleventh, twelfth grade. Mm-hmm. When for me, I'm going to college. Mm-hmm. So I gotta get my shit straight because I gotta get my, my transcripts right. I gotta make sure my shit's tight before I start sending it to school. Mm-hmm. For them, they're like, oh, I got to give me a job over at, you know, maybe the Naval or mm-hmm. Naval Academy or go somewhere, uh, food service, mm-hmm. something like that. Because And when they said Naval Academy, they meant support yes. at the Naval Academy. Not, not, no, <laughs> they did not, not mean enroll. No, 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 no. They did not no, mean no. enroll. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm trying to sign up. Nah, <laughs> no, they no. real life meant they was going to work on, yeah. They're going to work Because they're close to there. Uh-huh. Exactly. So yeah. to them, that's what they strive for. For me, I was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. I want more than that. Mm-hmm. But you realize they were set up for failure a long time ago. And by that time. That's the key. How many of our men, boys, going to men, had been set up for failure? A lot. And the most, and, and some of them who have success, mm-hmm. they were set up to fail. Absolutely. And, and, and most people, most <laughs> They of just us, barely made it through. That's true. Because mm-hmm. most of us, for instance, for me, it was a given. Your ass is going to college. Okay. So that wasn't something I found out in tenth grade, eleventh grade, when I was little. Because my my grandparents was about the education. My grandma in particular was about the education. So she was like, "No, you. Got, I don't want you to be out here taking the shit that we had to take. You have to get the education. Nobody can take the education away from you." Absolutely. So okay, cool. So I was I was in the library. I lived in the library. I was always that college that little kid that was in there, and I was always thirsting for knowledge. So I didn't 
want to just, I mean, if I messed up a test, I was pissed off at myself that I messed the test up and I want to do better. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who just like, I fail, whatever. And you know, they ain't think anything about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and in particular, when I started, when I was in high, when I was in elementary school, my school was probably 95% white. So it was no, oh, here's your education. Here's their, here's their education. No, no. If you're here, you have to learn what everybody else is learning. Absolutely. And you got to go with the same flow. So I was going to be that, oh, that kid, that black kid in the back of, who's in the back of the class. No, 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 no. I was in the front of the class mm -hmm. because, again, I knew I had to learn this. Mm -hmm. There was no cut point. There was no lower curve or nothing like that. So I learned that. And I took that going to, to school. And believe it or not, I had more black people, black kids, when I finally got to high school. By, by the time I got to high school, it was probably 60, 40 white. Okay. Um, but by that time, everything was easy to me mm -hmm. because I was, you know, things that black kids that I talked to were struggling. It was like, oh, you're black, especially black guys. Like, oh, you know, I can't do this class. It was easy for me because I had to learn it when I was in the lower grade. Mm hmm Speaking ahead, by the time I got to college, there was classes that I didn't have to take. There was classes people had to take, like, uh, <laughs> what do they call, son, those classes that you got to take before you take your regular classes? I was about to say remedial like shit. Yeah, yeah. remedial. It's not re I, I yeah, but it is remedial English, yeah. yeah. I, but they call it, they cleaned it up, I feel like. Yeah, they call it something else. It's, yeah. it's almost like when you took your uh, your SATs, uh -huh. and my SATs was high, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to take it. Yeah. But... A lot of people, man, I gotta take this goddamn. It's, and it's a, a 100 course. We call it a 100. Yeah, they course. are 100s. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh -huh. man, I gotta take that. I'm like, the fuck is that? Oh, English, math, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I'm like, I ain't gotta take that shit. You mm -hmm. ain't gotta take it? Mm -hmm. No, I ain't take that shit. Yeah. But they had to take it before they start taking any courses. So they Absolutely. Had to add those courses, three or four courses before. Sometimes it's the anything. whole semester. Yes. Of all. That <laughs> fucked me up. I was like, what the fuck? And what, what, but at least they showed up for it. They did. Because some some people couldn't even get that far. That yeah, is Yeah, when you think true. about it, some the guys who's sitting there on those levels down below from your high school, yes. they ain't getting there. No. They ain't taking no remedial courses before they start taking regular college courses. No, they, they didn't. And it, it blew my mind because the other thing was interesting is a lot of these cats came from PG County or Baltimore City, mm -hmm. had to take those remedial courses. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who went to Montgomery County or Anne Arundel County, all these other counties, mm -hmm. didn't have to take them. Absolutely. And I'm sitting there like, wow, what the fuck are they doing different in these counties that didn't, what are we doing different that they're not doing? Mm -hmm. But it, it always blew my mind that everybody came in, sophomore year, junior year, Every freshman that came in always had to take these 100 courses. And it always came from PG, uh, all these other counties. Yep. And I was like, what What are they not doing that has these kids so unprepared for fucking college? Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you See how you shifted the blame there? Because when the reality of it is, is that is it really that all of the parents from all of the other counties cared more than the parents from this county? From PG County. Ah. You see what I'm saying? It can't be that. No. It has to be the school because you have too many students. You have too many products. That so is then you very can true. run the numbers. Like if Pimoco was able to get their numbers up and where the children can operate and they coming out of high school and they, they're prepared for college. Yes. If the second county get their students out of their building and they're prepared for college mm -hmm. and the third county can do it and the fourth county. What happened to the fifth county? That's a damn good question. Like, what, what did what did Ja do or didn't do that the other counties did do? Wow, and and that's crazy, but yet true. Yes, because we speed ahead thirty years later. I said to myself, my kid can't go to the same schools I went to mm -hmm. because they changed even from that thirty year mark from when I went to when he went. It was like. I have to pay for him to have the education that he needs to get to to live and survive and thrive in this new world. Mm -hmm. That tells me and should tell everybody that the county schools and the schools in the states aren't fucking doing what they're supposed to do. Because if you as a parent have to pull your kid out of basically free education, mm -hmm. really it ain't you paying your taxes for it. Mm -hmm. But if you got to no, take your money and put your money that you, they're not giving it back to you. Mm -hmm. When you pull your school, you, you take your kid and put them in private school, they're not saying, well, you know what? 
take this money and go with you and with that school. They're like, fuck right, that. We're going right. to take your money anyway. And you still got to come in the pocket to pay for your kid to go to school to get a, a different type of education. Absolutely. That says a lot about the school systems and what the fuck are they doing. Absolutely. And, and who, how they're progressing and are they changing and making things. Are they uh, trying to get better at what they do? Yes. Are you it's trying almost to like they're the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they're, they're just trying to exist. Like, yes. No, nah, what are y'all doing? Are you getting better? And the only way you know that you're getting better is if your students operate better. And yes. they're not. They're fucking not. And we can't blame everything on pandemic. No, no. That's the other weird mm-hmm. part is that nowadays the school systems, like everything is, oh, it's because of pandemic. Oh, it's because of pandemic. These Damn. kids are failing way before the pandemic. And, and yeah. I think what pandemic did is that it, exposed just how bad things actually are because you can put makeup on shit and it still be shit and the things they've kept putting makeup on and the makeup ran out yep. so but it's like if you presented the information like okay first graders of today right mm-hmm. were they affected by pandemic but they'll be disadvantaged and then blame it on pandemic yes they will what are you doing how did the pandemic affect them because they weren't able to get pre-k for proper because they weren't able to get kindergarten proper. So now somehow because of the pandemic, mm-hmm. this this group is affected too? Mm-hmm. How? Well, they're going to make an excuse. Because it's again, just all excuses. All of his excuses because mm-hmm. no one really wants to sit back and look and say that this current system that we currently have, mm-hmm. education system. That you forced to pay into. Forced to pay into. Even if you opt to pay into another education system. It does not fucking work for the 21st century Mm -mm. and it's still someone saying okay let's go back and revisit this shit and make changes necessary changes a lot of people saying you know fuck this i'll put my kid in in a private school or homeschool or homeschool which is growing tremendously i mean it should uh yes because if the school's not doing it then then you have to do it (laughs) yes yes you want to take your kid out of school for two or three days they're talking about they got a doctor's note no for they had to be sick in order for us to like what go somewhere this is crazy. that doesn't even make sense it at this doesn't point doesn't make no sense i was talking to a guy recently and he was saying he moved close to my old high school mm-hmm. and he was like it's it, when he moved there he said i kept hearing that you know things are going to be different there and there's a better school and all that he said <laughs> the first day he took his kid in there it was a fight right there when he walked in the door he said it was a fight he was like oh my god he said, why are they fighting the first thing in the morning? It's, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. What mm-hmm. you fighting for? Mm-hmm. And then he said it got worse because then they put metal detectors in there. I said, we never thought about metal detectors going to school. That was the last thing on my mind. The last thing on my mind was like, God damn, I got to get in the class late before I, I got to come down and get a, a late note. Yeah. But now these kids got to worry about metal detectors, knives, guns. And he said, I think I made a mistake buying a house in this area to go to school because – I, f- I have to call my kid every day and text him, make sure they're good, make sure nothing jump off. He said, then they had a big fight recently down there. And mm-hmm. he said, how do these kids learn with this kind of tension and, 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 and threat that's going on down there? And how do the teachers teach? Mm-hmm. And I can see why teachers are quitting left and right because of what's going on down These kids can't learn. So if we're spending all this money to make schooling and education better, but yet you got a parent whose kid is currently in school Worried about hopefully my kid don't get shot, don't get stabbed, don't get in the middle. We don't send our kids to school to worry about. It's not a war zone. Yeah. It's not like you send them to to Kosovo or you send them to uh, Iraq. Mm -hmm. You send them to school to learn. And we see around these kids getting shot at. Every time you turn around, there's a school shooting. Yep. So what the fuck are we really teaching these kids today? And now, again... You got kids who ain't really learning. Mm-hmm. You got a, you got young men who are just getting passed through, passed through, and then they pass them right out of school. Congratulations, you graduated to what? Mm-hmm. Because you have no skill set. You can't fucking read. You can barely write. And your 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 logical reasoning skills hmm. are poor. Yes. Like yes, your ability to like think and apply certain things, it's not been challenged very much. No, because we didn't have any programs and extracurricular activities that were proper to kind of foster that. The other thing about the male female thing is 
it's sort of like in the workplace, right? Where the girls, the women are easier to deal with. Mm-hmm. So in the academia world, the ladies, the young young ladies are easy to deal with. So if there have been like an issue with learning, especially in elementary school, you'll see the teacher is more willing to spend mm-hmm. a few more minutes with the girls versus trying to settle the boys down to spend a few more minutes with the boys because Absolutely. they're doing too much, right? Absolutely. So you see that easy road being taken and so the woman (laughs) naturally you know if she was going to miss it she caught it because she was easier to deal with absolutely Mm -hmm. and what happens with the boys you're a disruption to this class you're a disruption so now we're going to push you somewhere else we're going to put you in a different class where all the other hard heads that they always say or they're not smart they're not intelligent did they ever think that maybe they're bored or they're going to put all their resources into disciplining you as opposed to all the resources into bringing you up to speed so we'll call up your mom and we'll have your mom come in and she'll have, you know, two or three meetings sitting down about what you did and how you disrupted the class. Mm-hmm. But we ain't never going to bring your mother up here and sit down and say, OK, this is the curriculum that we need for you to help with him at home. We got to have to do some special stuff to kind of really drill him because he's not where he needs to be. And his disruptions in class are really coming because he doesn't know the math back. Yes. Right. Yes. Because normally they bouncing off the wall. He needs to play a sport. Right. <laughs> yep. Because he should have been so tired last night that he could plunk into that bed. And when he woke up this morning, baby, he got to leave all that energy for the field tonight. Yep. Sometimes it's the fact that they're just not being balanced out and we're not having those serious conversations. Let that go all the way to you 18 and have to make it in the real world. The women are making it. Because they have been groomed to make it outside of the assistance of food stamps, temporary cash assistance, and child support and alimony, right? Absolutely. Outside of those things, the woman of today can afford a household on her own Mm -hmm. because she's educated enough. Yes, she is. There are so many of them Mm -hmm. because you've pivoted her in the situation because she's been easier to deal with. That's historically related. It's always been like that. It's just, it's just worse. When it comes to us. Yep, absolutely. And then we, the boys, who don't have someone pushing them or helping them along the yes. way, fall by the wayside. Yes, yes and you do. then the next thing you know, the kid becomes disruptive. He's not doing this. Well, you have already taken the fight out of him early. Yep. If you think about it, if you handle this situation when they're kin- kindergarten, first grade, that's the time to rectify and get that kid right. Yeah, build him up. But you're so busy seeing your problem. Yeah. Your, your problem sit down, child. little. Sit down, James. Stop moving, Christopher. You, you, like, you're no, almost sugar. He's, he's... You, you're, just, you're eating too much sugar. Oh, you got ADD. And it was quick to put mm-hmm. a kid on ADD medicine. Yeah. Because that's to keep him calm. Not to really say that this, maybe this calms him down so he can learn. Mm-hmm. So he can shut the hell up, be quiet, so he don't disrupt the rest mm-hmm. of the class. Oh, you'll keep sending him to the principal office so for them to sit there. Yes. This child was just bouncing all over the place. And now you're going to play the sit challenge? And then how many times will be you going to send him to the principal's office to do the nothing? He it, wants to do something. Yes. <laughs> and he it's don't not want just to him in the classroom doing this. It's about no. him and four or five other boys. That they're all doing the same damn same thing. Same thing. And the first thing you're saying, they got behavior problems. Mm-hmm. But you don't want to do the actual work necessary to say, let's put them somewhere else and just teach them differently. Mm-hmm. Let's still, still doing the curriculum and the way we're doing it now. Let's try something else mm-hmm. and see if this works. Yep. And then when you don't do that, boys check out. Yep. They, I've seen them. I've seen them They're in classes. You know, the ones that check out really check out. The ones that get it, I see them. Like I said, they stay the engaged the whole time. The whole time. We're like having I get different it. conversations. And that's the other thing. You have different conversations, you grow. Because mm-hmm. the ones that are not making it, they're not thinking about the college. They're not thinking about anything. They just think about, you know, I get out of here and get a job. They're just trying to enjoy life. Pretty much. They don't think they have to make a plan. Nope. They don't think planning is for them. They don't think that they have to actually assess certain things and then carry on based off of what they assess. They just feel like we'll just go, go, go. Yes. And yes. That, that, that's, that's a recipe for a disaster. It really is. And then you find yourselves, you begin to hang around each other like groups of grapes. Mm-hmm. Because that's when the division happens. Because me, I get along with everybody. I, I mm-hmm. get along with any and everybody. But you can see the ones who 
you know, thought a little differently, like, hey, I'm just going to find a job. They hang together because yep. they relate to each other. Yep. The other ones who were like, I, I want to go to school. I want to go to the military. I want to do something, something different. More. Something more. Mm-hmm. They hang in their group because mm-hmm. it's like of like minds. And, you know, you may know each other, but you don't really conversate. I can conversate with anybody because, again, it's not who you are. You know, but our paths doing. don't cross as much anymore. We don't. It doesn't because right? once you get out of school and mm-hmm. you go on that path to school and everything else, you're on a different road. Yes, you're not in that. I got to get up every day and, and, and go to work and then do. Mm-hmm. You're not there because mm-hmm. you're going somewhere totally different. Yep, and you may not meet them. And when you do meet them, you see them where they are. They see you where you are. Mm-hmm. I never forget. I was, <laughs> I was, I was working in D.C. I met a guy who went who went to high school with me. He said, man, I don't know how you do it, bro. He said, I said, do what? He said, man, I was getting gas. He said, go on up there, man. Go on up there. Where you work? I said, working in D.C. He said, man, I can't imagine going to D.C. So that's where the money at. Yeah, man, but I can't imagine getting up and driving and doing all that stuff. I said, what the hell you do? Oh, you know, I'm trying to find myself. I'm in between jobs. Never mind you, we were probably, I was 31 at that point. So we're in our 30s. He's like, how the fuck you you complaining? You just barely getting by, barely doing what you got to do. But mm-hmm. He was cool with that. Mm-hmm. He was cool with just getting by. He was cool because he just... had been fostered a lifestyle of getting by. Yep, exactly. And everybody covered him. The school let him pass. Mm-hmm. His, his mama let him pass. His sister let just him do pass. Do a little bit. Do you a little don't bit. Do the most. You know, you could do a little project, which we ain't, we ain't gonna do it properly, but it's done. It's done. Yeah. So, and I got a little something here, my little money there, mm-hmm. and I'm like. That's not my mindset. My mindset, I got to get my ass up and I got to make that money money. Mm-hmm. I can't make that chump change because that's based on what I want to go and what I want to do. I got to go where the money is. Mm-hmm. And my education allowed me to get there. But you could see a clear demarcation of uh-huh. where people fell off at and where you went. And, but then it's, a, it's a, an effect because now we have kids. Yes. So now based on your vision – your kid can either follow your footsteps or you say, you know what? I don't want my kid to go through that. As a, as a, as if I have a, a boy, I don't want him to go through that. I'm going to make sure I stay on his ass in school because I don't want him to suffer like I'm suffering because I yeah. didn't get the education. Or you could say, oh, you know what? I survived, so shit, he survived too. Leave it by chance. Exactly. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, how many people have played the lottery? People play the lottery all the time. The lottery's gone up to billions. But how many people have won it? One. Leave it up the chance if you want to. Because it, it might work out for you in, in your favor if you just leave life up the chance. It might. Yes. But the chances of it? <laughs> no, nah, I'm going to plan mine out. I'm going to plan mine out. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and, and look what we just what we're saying. If you're a young man who didn't do well in school, mm-hmm. don't have a plan for what you're going to do after school, mm-hmm. now you're out there in the real world mm-hmm. trying to fend for yourself. Yes. So now you're that guy who can't leave a leave a house because you don't even have a vision for where you want to go. School is the place where you learn. Are they called morals? The things that you need when you go out into the real world, like perseverance, accountability, your discipline, mm-hmm. um, all of those things, right? Mm-hmm. It's the very idea of what how to create a good student, right? Yes. Number one, you hold them accountable, right? Mm -hmm. Did you go home and did you read the material? Mm -hmm. So when you come in, you take the test, you got a good grade because you did read the material, right? That's accountability. Mm -hmm. You got a poor grade because you didn't read the material. There you go. That's accountability. Some point in that test taking and in taking that information Somebody would have had that conversation with them. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you didn't do too good on this test. You need to study harder. Exactly. Now, for the child who's being passed along, they just received the test back. Yeah. There's no feedback. Nope. There's no, you can do better. No. Right? Nope. You do good on the test. And, oh, you did great. Keep the job. Keep that up. Mm-hmm. You're right. Right? You're absolutely right. Perseverance. You, you feel like you don't want to do this anymore because it's too hard or you feel like you want to give up because you just don't quite understand it. That giving up thing, that's hmm. work ethic in the long run. Your yes. ability to work through something, 
you got that long math problem that you got to keep reworking it and you don't write what they say show all your work mm -hmm. and you don't show all your work and it's still the wrong answer mm -hmm. they gave you the answer they want you to tell how to get there absolutely you got to yes. persevere through that and you yes. got to get to that right answer even if it takes you 10 or 20 goals perseverance so yes. when it's two o'clock and you got to hit that clock till three o'clock, mm. you better sit there and persevere <laughs> through those hours. You absolutely right. Yes. Right. There's certain things that in school you're groomed into becoming a responsible responsibility, mm -hmm. taking a book home, bringing it back, saying, Hey, you got a project due on this date and you actually show up with the project in hand. Absolutely. All of these things, no matter how crappy, the school system is absolutely right it's still that opportunity to learn all of those things that you need when you walk into adulthood yes because or at least when you start that step into adulthood right yes mm -hmm. you would need that yes because of course if you don't learn it in school and you don't learn it at home mm -hmm. you are set up for failure mm -hmm. because if you go in this world and thinking that, oh, I'm going to do anything I want to do and everybody's mm -hmm. going to accept it, you are absolutely yep. wrong. Because yep. they will fire your ass on the drop of a dime and you'll be the person who's mad. I don't know why they fired me. Mm -hmm. You know why they fired you? Because your ass thought you can do everything. Yep, anything you wanted to do. Because you did it in school. Mm -hmm. You did it at home. Or you, you know, you're okay with just figuring out the next job when it comes. Like you don't want to plan, <laughs> right? When you're in school, oh, school God shows damn. you all the time that you plan for your next step. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about going to college, right? You mm -hmm. start checking out your colleges your junior year, right? Absolutely. By the time you're in your senior year, it's not the latter part of the senior year when you're oh. about to graduate. It's the beginning part of the senior year. Yes, ma'am. Right? You yes. start writing those essays. You start sending those things out before the holidays mm -hmm. really come on through, right? Absolutely. And so you plan for the future. Yes. Yes. You constantly plan for the future. And school is teaching you that in order to be successful, mm -hmm. you should plan for the future. <laughs> yes. But if you're one of those students where that lesson was not taught to you because you were just passed along or because you're a behavioral issue, mm -hmm. yes. it is going to be what, exactly what it is. You're going to feel like you don't have to make a plan in life. You're going to yep. feel like planning doesn't necessarily serve you because you got here this far. I got I here by wing and prayer. Far. Yeah. Yep. No. Even the Bible says you need to plan because haste is what results in poverty, I think is what it says. Uh, yes. <laughs> and and <laughs> like, which is, it's weird you say that because that's exactly where a lot of these people end up. Mm -hmm. Struggling yeah. their yeah. entire life. Just a struggle. And you're you trying just... to make a quick buck mm -hmm. or you're trying to sign up for the job where you don't need any training or you don't need to invest any money in the training. Exactly. Right. Yes. You need to invest money into yourself. But if I've never seen anyone invest money into me, like mm. think about your kids projects. Uh -huh. That's the first time where you show somebody that you just need to invest money into yourself. We're not going to make any money back off of this project. Nope. None. This little $50 I'm taking out of my wallet to go buy this little ten dollar project board these fifteen dollar damn markers you know these little yes. frills and thrills i done spent fifty dollars at the staples you damn skippy how much of that i'm gonna get back zero zero dollars and guess what i'm gonna be okay with that of course you're going because to be. i sold something into you that later on we're gonna reap all of this back it's gonna be reaped back with the greatness yes. that you're gonna have come from you and your family come to to be this is what people fail to realize. These kids grow up. Mm -hmm. They will get out of school mm -hmm. one way or the other. Yep. Yep. And they aging out. They're going to age They out. ain't getting out nowadays. Mm -mm. These children are aging out, especially, especially our boys oh. are aging out of school. So I don't want to hear nobody attacking the woman talking about she in her masculine space. And she's taking over the households and she's leading the households. Mm -hmm. We failed our boys. And continue to fail. And continue to fail our boys. Yep. And then blame the women mm -hmm. once they become adults mm -hmm. and they're, they're forced to survive. And yes. don't get me wrong. There's some messy stuff going on in between there. There's some women who's taken, you know, 
mm-hmm. poor routes and are hiding behind the nonsense. Absolutely. But when we talk about almost 80 percent. That's a huge of the households. Numbers. Yes. It's more than women pissing the men off and being disrespectful to the men and saying, I can do this all by myself. Don't no woman want to do nothing all by herself. And you know what? Now that you said that, let's be perfectly clear. Nobody can do anything by themselves. Absolutely. And I'm tired of people saying that, you know, I'm strong and I'm alpha on this. That's yeah, fine and dandy. Mm-hmm. In order for you to have a healthy, functional family, mm-hmm. you have to work with someone to get there. Even people who move up in, in, in careers, they're talking about, oh, I did it myself. No, you, no didn't. you didn't. It took somebody to look at you and say mm-hmm. that you're worth bringing up to this next level. It took somebody to say, hold on, let me take a minute out of my day and write you a nice little referral. Yes. At some point, somebody had to stop doing what they was doing outside of their regular work day. Your up was not their up. Nope. Nope. Not and at they all. still said, nah, I'm going to type up this letter or I'm going to answer the phone and speak for you. Speak yes. on your behalf and about the way that you operate so that you can get up that ladder. So you're right. We're not doing it on our own. We're not designed to do it on our own. And it doesn't make sense to do it on our own. But we cannot correct the problem by pointing the finger and saying that the woman is leading the household strictly because she wants to lead. 80% of today's households are led by women. That's crazy. And and to me, it kind of sounds like when you say they're led by women, it sounds like there are some men in those households too. And it has to be. There has to be men present in these households. It's just they are not, I don't want to say willing to lead. Mm -hmm. I want to say they are not capable of leading. And there's obviously a financial factor Mm -hmm. in this happening too. Mm -hmm. So it also goes back to we have to change our mindset on people and jobs and working. The thing is, you will never ever become rich working for somebody else. It's not. It's not designed that way. Trading time for money, also, you're right? Gonna lo- you're gonna never. lose every time. You're every gonna s- lose every single time. All Just the crunch time. the numbers. Yep. All you gotta do is cr- <laughs> <laughs> all you gotta do is crunch the numbers, and it's never gonna work in your favor. Never. Yeah, we can agree to that. So the thing is, we have to have we have to make sure that we start diversifying our educational system. In such a way that you know people are not everybody's not going to go to college. Mm-hmm. The one thing that was really upsetting is they took out trade out of school. Remember when you went to school, they had. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a product of it. See, but you and had so an was opportunity. My child. Yeah, and that's I make the thing. sure. I make sure. Nah, before you go to college, I I don't know. I'm maybe a little bit weird when it comes to that because I did have a trade in high school. And so when it was, you know, it's my son's time to come through. Like, nah, get a trade before you go to college or into the military. Because it just makes sense to me. Yes. Why wouldn't you have a trade or something that you do? Exactly. To kind of run with. That's what they don't tell you. That's what they took mm-hmm. out. Because you have people working in automotive, mm-hmm. uh, barbershop, yeah. uh, salons. Uh-huh. Work. So, the- so what they did today, though, is they took the masses of them out. Right. Uh, and then supplemented them with pockets and, you know, like a little cluster here. So one school here will offer a few trades, but that's not going to be seen for like the other side of the county. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it'd be extremely um, n- not equally divided amongst the population in the counties. It's still there. So wow. you can't necessarily say it's just erased, but it's not equally like uh, opportune to everyone. And, and and let me say this: I last week I read something and saw something actually the same day. They were saying that there is a seventy eight thousand thousand uh, seventy eight thousand jobs related to um, automo- automobile and motorcycle positions. Mm-hmm. They can't. Fi- they say we can't find enough people to do automotive work and uh, motorcycle work because great money in it too. Uh-huh. Great money, train you all that. But you have to work in the elements. People want to work at home. Mm-hmm. Today's person 
then want to work at all. And that's a problem. So I'm out here trying to milk this clock for these hours and I ain't trying to do no more than two hours worth of work. You know, I'm on your clock for eight. But you know how them attitudes get. I'm not doing no more than two hours worth of work, and I better not have a meeting today. <laughs> you rapping you know, that? I know Damn y'all that. get because yeah, y'all do that you know in my that. chair. Yep, you know yeah. that. So, y'all sit there with your attitudes, <laughs> neck, neck get the rolling. I be like, well, damn. Yeah. I wish I could come to work and only <laughs> work for two hours. I, yeah, I mean, so again, mm-hmm. but but there's work out there and good work because mm-hmm. the thing is. People complain about, oh, I'm not, I can't work one job and take care of myself, which is true. It's mm-hmm. by design. Mm-hmm. So, but if you can go and get, in fact, the guy said you can make seventy-five to eighty-five thousand dollars starting working as an automotive assistant. And if you're into plumbing, electrician, he said you're looking at six figures. Yeah. Now, granted, it's not the, it's not great work, but it's work that's necessary. I mean. It's work that never ends. Nope. Most of them are self-employed. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I mean, it's just, I don't want to be like that, but this this one of those daddy jobs. I remember my uncle was a plumber and my dad's a contractor. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're a little mechanic, yeah. And we knew I that. Think, yeah, we and those people. people were the ones you called, you know, you need your hole patched up, you knew who to call, you know, your car needed the oil change, you, you know who to call because- mm-hmm. Those are the people who do exactly, I mean, even the hairdressers, like you need your hair done. You know who you're calling. And in a world of today where everything's trying to get to a virtual setting, mm. there are certain, like I can, I'm sorry, Jetsons, meet the Jetsons. We're still looking for that little thing to put on the head mm-hmm. where like the hair just changes itself. Cause I'm retired. Okay. I'm going to oh, be all Lord. the way. Kick me out of business. All that. Yep. Put that little thing on our head. I'm, I'm, baby, we in push business. The and push Boom. the button. I mean, curl my locks up and some more stuff. Exactly. Hook me up, you know? <laughs> but until we find that contraption, oh, there are certain jobs and fields mm-hmm. that you just can't put on the World Wide Web. You can't. You got to show up for that oil change, Every baby. Single <laughs> Every single day. A man got to come to your house and get on the ladder still. To change out your roof. <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. Because I saw a guy today come up and I said, Oh, shit, my name was Guy Get His Roof Changed. And, and it was yep. three guys up there yep. uh, change the roof. Because there's certain things that's just never going to change. Yep. When those pipes burst in the winter time, oh, God. You better know who to call. I'm calling my daddy. Because <laughs> your dad do everything. <laughs> he does every damn thing. So, yeah, but you got to uh, Yeah, it's some things where you need to, and not just. Not any old man. No. You need a manly man. There you go. Yeah. He's going to get his hands dirty. Yeah. He's going to do all that stuff, but you know he's going to make that money. Yeah. And and, and he's worth it. He's damn well, we're, worth it. Where we're moving jobs away and basic retail jobs are being depleted, mm-hmm. right? Because the, the worker, the yep. need for the worker is diminishing, right? Yes. Those, those jobs... The price to get your stuff changed on uh, underneath your hood, that has to that has to increase. It got to. <laughs> it's gonna. <laughs> and T, you know, we have cars. Now. Let me go back to the seventies mm-hmm. when you change shit in your car in the seventies. You can see everything. Oh, yes. there's this. Oh, there's that. And you can go in there and you can go get your spark plugs and get yes. your change on oil on and pop your car up and do all that shit. Nowadays, you you look for your hood, nothing but one great big plastic yep. box. And whatever you do, you better hook up that car to a computer. But see, today's young man, he's sophisticated. Mm-hmm. He enjoys all that. Yes. Like, let me plug this into my computer, put my little earbuds in, get my little wrench out. They go, like, that's what they do. So, again, what we just said, just automotive-wise, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you put... In every school, mm-hmm. or in general, make sure that all the schools that have access to it, automotive places, and all, of, and at, at least all the vicinities, right? Yes. So where it's accessible to the communities, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, Something as basic as automotive. Nowadays, we see, I think, because people don't want their children just in automotive, right? Mm-hmm. We see the Cisco, I think, coming in, yes, like the trays and um, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But we're okay with that. Yeah. But again, even that is not very accessible absolutely it's not it really isn't Mm-mm. but if you look around everything is changing into computers mm-hmm. but 
you have to think long term. You have to think not like you're playing checkers, but you're playing chess. If you have a bunch of computers, computers do break. Mm -hmm. Computers don't stay working all the time. So you need people who's able to fix computers mm -hmm. and know what the hell they're doing. Not to mention, you need cybersecurity. You need people to need to know how to put something on your computer. Because every time I turn on my damn computer, because I have all the, the stuff on there to protect from people stealing and jumping on my computer, mm -hmm. all the way over in Russia. Yep. So you need somebody who understands how to put this on your computer, how to protect your computer, how to get your information if yep. your information gets lost. This is I blame schools. You see these changes. You see all this stuff that's happening, and you're not saying, well, let me go ahead and modify. Maybe not in the beginning. In the beginning, can you teach these kids how to look, read and write and, mm -hmm. and make sure they stay mm -hmm. up? Hone those skills, though. Hone those goddamn skills. How are we skills. not honing the skill? How are we not honing reading? And and that is scary. How you graduate mm -hmm. and can't read or write? Oh, how you it, saying it's the mom's fault or the dad's fault, the parents' fault, the child, y'all kid can't read? Like, no, they now. get that. That yes. mom and dad actually understand that they failed their child. They get Absolutely. that. And they are actually sending their kid into the building and asking for help. And what are you doing as a school rather than passing them or, or passing them along? Uh, this it's not my problem. Well, what you're gonna make is society's problem. That's what it is, because I understand that mom didn't teach the kid how to read or write properly. Right. Mm -hmm. She was probably fighting with the man. She was probably at work too long. Then she had to cook dinner. And then you talking about basketball practice. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> she's tired. She is exhausted. And she's not nobody's superwoman. And she's like, darn. Mm -hmm. This time going to go by fast. And if somebody don't help me catch Make sure that baby boy is reading on point by first grade. Exactly. He missed the market for the rest of his life. And we're yes. going to play the blame game and you receive the whole check for your job. Whole, That's oh, not right. And see, let's this, this, this have that uncomfortable discussion. Maybe the mother can't read or write. Maybe she can't read nor write because it used to be when I was coming up, there was no expectation on the mother. The way the mm -hmm. expectation is today. Mm -hmm. And now don't get me wrong. My oldest is 17. Mm -hmm. Still require him to sit down at the dining room table. I'm not one of these absent style mothers who ain't got the time, mm -hmm. the energy, or the knowledge. Right? Mm -hmm. I got it all. And I'm there and I'm present and I'm very active with my children. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> everybody cannot operate in the same capacity because like, I don't even have the traditional, like, job, no, right? Where true. I work that solid, structured eight eight, eight hours a day. I don't have that no. that treacherous, you know, perhaps two and a half, two hour commute, you know, for the mm -hmm. day. So my lifestyle is a, a lot more flex. Exactly. Now imagine you worked in D.C. or you're a nurse mm -hmm. and you were dragged out 12 hours a day and you're tired and you got more than one kid and... They got a practice or a recital or something. Yes. How are you giving all of that? I mean, there's only but so many hours in a day. <laughs> that is so baby. true. That's true. You better get some cucumbers for them eyes because them bags are going <laughs> to tell on you. That is yes. so goddamn true. Yes. It's, it's a fact. And so you're setting these kids up to be society's problem. Mm -hmm. So we want to spend more money <laughs> on jails and prisons mm -hmm. than on truly revising and, and revamping our mm -hmm. educational system mm -hmm. because the educational system we currently have is not dealing with the real 21st century issue. Nope. And it's going to create an issue for us for 20, 20 years from now. Yes, it will. Our boys today, if there's a pandemic problem with our boys today reading, the young kids told me they waving. Um, I'm about to call them MCATs. Um, SATs. Waving? I said, what? Well, my seniors. They're waving the, the SATs? So my awesome, son, yeah, they ain't really looking at SATs. What the fuck? I told you I had one kid. He, he struggled on ASVAB. Oh, come on now. Took the ASVAB test a handful of time. I didn't know you could do that. Me neither. Back then, you took that shit one time. You took the ones that was your score. That was the end. So you knew where you were going to end up in the, into the military. Yeah, Here's a gun. <laughs> <laughs> fucking good. And don't and don't shoot yourself and shit. Just make sure you don't shoot anybody I else. You be the cut. <laughs> oh 
man. So, but pretty much, we see that today's child is oper- is not operating on, you know, on par. No, they're not. They're really not. What about the younger children of today? Oh, <laughs> Where are they? Are? And we just God. spoke about uh, if they're not operating on par by the time they complete first grade, what their trajectory looks like. And it's so crazy to me because you're basically setting these kids up. You're setting up a, a next generation of a dumber gen- generation. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. dumbing down the educational system to a point where you're going to have what you're seeing right now, the haves and the have nots. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I don't know if we all know this, but we all pay in the same amount for it. Yes. Right? Like, yes. you're not yes. paying no more, no less than I'm paying. Like, nope. I'm paying for this. We are. Why are we not mad, mad? Why are we not out in the streets protesting about <laughs> We protesting be. about all the <laughs> wrong things. Yes. I can guarantee you. Yes. We protesting about the wrong stuff. You're absolutely right. Because my thing is, you should be out there every day. If your kid can't fucking read, you know they can't read. You know your child can't. And if you don't know that your kid can't read, I'll be damned. You should be kicked in your ass. You 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 need, you need to knock on your door from CPS at this point. <laughs> I don't even know what type of parents. I don't even know what type of parenting you're doing. God damn! I, I can't even imagine how the fuck is a parent. Hey, remember, you know you can't. Remember, can't this, remember the teachers used to come to the doors. Shit, you know? yeah. I remember the motherfuckers used to call you, call your phone, and you be like, oh no, please don't. <laughs> Please don't call if I get home because back then they'll call your ass before you, you got home. They'll call mm-hmm. your parent. Yeah. And Lord knows only them catch you at dinner time. Mm-hmm. And you fucked up. You got a bad grade. You trying to hide that shit. Yeah. You want to just have them sign it. You know, I was like, oh shit. I'm going to have to sign it for him. I was the signer. Yeah. Yep. I, signed, I was the but, signer. But then they called. Did you sign the paperwork? What paperwork? I ain't seen no paperwork. Oh shit. <laughs> oh Lord. Gave you a follow up. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh shit. Oh, mama. I, you know, I meant to give it to you. It's not gonna save your ass whipping, mm-hmm. but you won't do it again mm-hmm. because she's like, I be goddamn, I'm working my ass off, and you down down the school fucking up. Yeah, all I ask you but do see, go we work school. together. Yes, you, believe it or not, that's what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to try to pull a little wool over somebody's eyes. Like, I mean, you know, I'm gonna try. You <laughs> yes. have to try it. Yes, you, you test the waters at that age. But yep. it's the community that's supposed to work together mm-hmm. to make sure that you stay on the proper track. So the teachers of today, as easy as it is to reach out, I don't know that many feel like it. I don't think they do either. They're like, listen, if you don't know that your kid is failing when you got all of these resources to know that your kid is failing, then that's a personal problem. And it's like we got all these personal problems, which real life are society's problems. They are society's problems. Mm-hmm. And again, and people talk about, oh, well, you know, we, we shouldn't, the kids, if they ain't learning the, you know, that's their problem. No, motherfucker, it's going to be our problem. It's going to be everybody's problem because your child, whether Tamara sits her children down and drills them their lesson and makes certain that, you know, I created great citizens into the pool. Mm-hmm. They got to go out there and find partners now. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what type of woman would my son be bringing home and what type of man would my daughter be bringing through the door? Oh, And if fuck. the only people who I cared about was the people on the side of my household, then, well, that's going to put us at later on. Ooh, that's not going to be good. Because now that means your children who've been properly trained. Absolutely. And you're going and you're going to lead them to where they need to get to. That's right. Gonna go out in this wide open world. That's absolutely true. And find some fuck motherfucker who's gonna be a sad ass example. But they're like, well, what else are there to pick from? Exactly. So exactly, <laughs> exactly. So if all of us don't give a damn, and it's the mom's fault or it's the dad's fault, mm-hmm. huh? Mm-hmm. Teachers used to be like special, and they used to know. How special and how influential their role and their jobs Absolutely. were to the world. Absolutely. Not yes. just to the building, to the school, or to that kid. They know how many products of greatness that they create. Just yes. as the kindergarten teacher. Just the teacher from third grade. Yes. Yes. That's missing today. 
And you know, I'm a, I saw a story on IG yesterday, which was, it made tears come my eye. Young man was getting married. Mm-hmm. His, his elementary school principal walked up to him and that boy buckled like he was, he, like he was in, in the first grade again. Mm-hmm. She hugged him and he hugged her, mm-hmm. he cried. And she said, I told you, you were gonna do great things mm-hmm. when you were a little kid. Mm-hmm. And he said, you always supported me. Mm-hmm. Everything I did, going to college, everything. I remember, and I forgot her name, and I think I have to send it to you. He said, you you always believed in me when my own people didn't believe mm-hmm. in me. Mm-hmm. And I'm blessed that you're here to see me get married and see I have a home now, I'm yep. getting married, I finished college. And he said, I want to thank you. He hugged and, and she hugged and cried with him, said, all I saw was greatness in you. Mm-hmm. And I had to see with my own two eyes. I didn't want nobody to just tell me. Mm-hmm. So his mother ended up invite, inviting her. And she flew in from another yep. state to yep. see this. Yep. This is what teachers need to do yep. to in order to help these yep. kids. Because if you think about how he internalized his experience with her, mm-hmm. all the emotion that was created, it was mm-hmm. a positive emotion and a positive feeling. Exactly. Now, had that had been a negative experience? All that it still would have been lots of emotion. Yes, yes. That he would have internalized, Absolutely. but then it would have came out very negative. Absolutely. And now I don't have respect for certain groups of people mm-hmm. because y'all never cared about me. Nobody yeah. cared about me. So when I go to higher learning, mm-hmm. those professors not gonna care about me because ain't nobody never cared about me. There you go. Those experiences that sculpt us as children put us on the trajectory that we are as adults. Absolutely. And we're not going to beat and tear down <clears throat> the male-female dynamic because we know it's out of order. We know it's out of order. So now what do we do about it? <laughs> what do we do about it? And first thing is we have to make sure that we're properly raising our young men mm-hmm. the right way. Yep. Get them the help necessary yep. to make them productive members of society. Yeah. Don't set them up for prison. Don't set them up for failure. Don't set them up for mediocrity. Oh, damn. Yes. I had to say it. Yes. Because too many people are okay with their sons just being okay. Yeah. No. He is great. Absolutely. Unlock yes. his greatness, and then we be all right. God damn. I, I can't say no more. You, you, <laughs> you, you, that's a drop the mic moment. Boom. I, don't fail your people. Listen to us. Look at us. <gasps> do not fail your kids, and particularly do not fail your male child. Because if you set them up for failure, we all fail. Yes, your man child. Yes. Don't fail that man child. No. He's not just a boy. He's no. a man in training. Exactly. Get him to the end and make sure it's a positive end. Please do. Yeah. Please you. Please do. Please do that. Or else. We all got to deal with it. All of us. All of us. And it doesn't matter how good you do your kid. Because no. there's always a, that other kid out there. That yeah. will fuck up the whole Come situation. right into your household. There you go. Yes. Oh, my God. And some of them were probably your baby daddy. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to end with that because that can't be no truer than that. So with that final thing from the producer, <laughs> I'm going to end this episode of All That Bike with the M. And C. Listen, people, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hey, come subscribe to the channel. Like the channel. I'm saying it twice because you missed some good shit. So come see us, drop us a note or two, do what you got to do, and we'll be back soon with some more knowledge. Thank you. Until then, peace and love. You're giving me wind and rain.